Hello friends, welcome back. This is full stack development video series. We're building online course enrollment application and this is episode 16. In this video, we're going to see something interesting which we haven't built at all in the channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how SQL trigger works in Azure function. So when a record is updated or inserted into a particular table, it is going to trigger Azure function and the Azure function is going to read some data and send an email to the user. So come, it will be interesting. Let's get started. So friends, before we dive in, this is the GitHub link where you will find every single project that I'm demonstrating. So feel free to go through and browse whichever project you like. For this specific video, I will post the exact link of the repository in the video description itself. If you would like to follow me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and GitHub, these are the links that you can click and follow me. I will be more than happy to collaborate with you. So don't forget to follow me. Now let's dive into the video. All right. So the feature that I'm going to show you is already deployed to this website, which you all know. So if you go to this website and make sure you log in, when you log in and go to request, request a video, you will see a screen like this. So I built a feature just for you guys or uh, for this application uh, usage like you can come here and you can ask for a particular tech video that you are interested in so for example i want a video which is not in the channel or i don't find anything anywhere in the web you wanted to learn about it so you come here and choose a topic choose a subtopic whichever you want and then fill up a short title description and then hit on submit once you do that you will see your own request here not only that for example right so i created as a user i created this request you can see um you know this is a description and response is something that as an admin i will be able to send it okay i'll show you that in a moment and then you can also see like this right so a lot of request um so you can you can actually ask anything that you want the technical uh, thing it is there here so that's what this request is all about, right? So if a user is not an admin, they cannot go here. You can see it's denied and I'll show you as admin how it will look. So I'm going to log off. I'm going to log in back as an admin. So I logged in. If I go here, I will be able to see every single user's request here. I can actually edit and I can update the response if I'm changing the status to like say reviewed whatever it is right which means I will be able to respond to you if everything is done probably I will make it as published and then I'll give you the video link and all of those things so I will be able to update the request okay so that is what it works so this feature right so why am I showing all of this feature we're going to build this feature in the upcoming episode but as of this episode this data is saved in a table all right so i created a table along with whatever we have so the table name is video request it basically has who is the person goes requesting which is the foreign key and then other important uh, columns right topics subtopics title description video response and all of those things so basically i created this table okay the data are going to get inserted here as user is going to fill up this information or an admin updates a particular request there is an update going to happen on this table what we are going to do is we are going to trigger an email via azure function using sql trigger it's a new one we haven't done that so we're going to do that and i'll show you what exactly you need to do the source code is available in github so don't worry about the source code but let's understand one by one now let's say you created the table okay if you want to do by yourself for a different table just follow this right so as long as you want to do you need a table and then you need to enable the tracking in database under table so for that this is the script which is um, available so basically we're saying alter the database and enable the change tracking so that it can trigger the details like we enable the change tracking for the database and we enable the change tracking for a particular table okay now here comes the interesting thing so this is our existing azure function um, project okay this is there in the github repository 
okay all what you have to understand is we need to create a function and then the function is going to call an email uh, logic and it will be sending an email what we want is we need to have a sendgrid account sendgrid is the software that we are going to use okay which is giving a free 100 emails per day per user so i have registered already i have shown this video earlier so come here to my channel look for sendgrid you'll be able to see this this video so follow this video just set up the sendgrid account if you have not done okay so you just need a sendgrid api key so once you're done with that let's come and build the azure function okay so i created a class called video request trigger that has a constructor in the constructor i'm injecting a couple of things like logger email notification class and the i configuration so we will take a look at what is in the email notification okay so let's go there let's first understand what is there here so this has just one method which is uh, going to send an email confirmation so if you look at this method okay what it has is it is expecting a video request entity which means i updated the latest tables here including the table that we created which is video request okay so it is expecting a video request and then it is expecting a username and a, um email id okay so these three are the input parameter for this method what this method is doing is it is reading the configuration of sendgrid api key which is in the local settings which i will show you so it is going to read this configuration from the local settings here api key and then the from address also in the local settings so let's go to local settings what do i have i have the from the sendgrid api key right you need to replace your key here so i have these two which means i took all of these things from the configuration and then what it is doing is if the incoming uh, request object is having a status called requested which means it's a newly submitted request i'm formatting the subject and from according to that okay so we need to uh, use the send grid message from where the send grid message is coming it's coming from send grid and send grid mail dlls which means you need to install two packages these two packages send grid and send grid dependency once you install these two packages you'll be able to use the email address class and the send grid message so let's recollect i took all the configuration details like the send grid api key from address to address and all and then based on incoming data if the status is requested then it is a new request i format the send grid message with the from and the subject after that i'm saying the content type is html and then this is the content so i pass this to a method this method is again going to format our content okay so based on the object it is just simply formatting the mail content it will return a plain string so once the plain string comes we have the content here we are putting a log and then using the send grid client you have to attach the api key that's super important and then invoke the method send the message done this will send the email but who's calling this let's go back to our starting point so we have a video request trigger class we have a function so all what you have to understand in this function is after you open the parenthesis you have to specify what kind of event this function is called sql trigger that is the event that needs to be invoked so sql trigger syntax is you have to specify the table name you need to specify the connection string db context is the connection string which is available in this local settings you see this so it knows how to read the db context from here and then it is i read only list of sql change of t t type in our in our case we are dealing with request video request table that's why video request is here okay it's a list of 
it's just a read only data it's a list of read only data okay so this is the foremost important thing to set up a sql trigger inside this is basically how you need to do, what you need to do the logic so let's understand one more time sql trigger is the one and that's coming from microsoft azure function worker extension dot sql which means this i think it is in preview state it's wonderfully working right so we use this feature and then what we are doing is we are going to go through the incoming read only list for every single change request we need to assign it to a variable and we pass this variable to the uh, send video request confirmation uh, method so in order to send we have the video request good we don't have username and user information like the email id so we use the db context query it from the profile table pass these two information into this one so from where this db context is coming hmm, it's coming from this method let's go here this is a common method which is basically taking the connection string formatting the option and generating a db context class okay that's it this is the only single thing that you need to do now what are the other things you have to do apart from these things you have to make sure you have these three more configuration sql trigger max batch size polling interval and max changes per workload so polling interval every one second it will poll and find out is there any request uh, any table record got changed if i change this to 60 seconds like 60000 every one minute only it will poll so if there was a record uh, if let's say if there was a 10 records modified the 10 records will come back when you poll the next time okay so like that that's the polling um, you know interval so we are polling every one second so we can increase the size also so we want all of these things all of these five settings and then yeah so remaining and all is already present okay so for good that's it so after that uh, what you have to do is when we deploy so we, we already have set up the ci cd for this so all right so let's say you have deploying this one right as soon as the code checks in this gets deployed in order for us to make this work in the deployed state like in the production state you have to come to this function and then go to this environment variable like i already said whatever you have newly added the properties you need to add it here so i have added a from i have added a send grid api key I have added these three. See, you see this SQL trigger max size and the uh, profiler polling interval, right? So whatever I added there, I have been adding here as well because Azure will always take it from here. Okay. So that's the only thing after you do these things in order for you to view, say, let me give you a demo. Okay. So this is the new one that's got deployed. So I'm going to go to the app insights. You see this application insights and let's go to application insights let's trigger it live so you will see what's happening uh okay so this is application inside so let's go to the log okay so let's go to function um let's go to that particular one which is this one so i go here and i go to the logs okay so now i'm going to trigger it let's say what happens if i trigger it okay I'm saying it's in reviewed, submitted. Let's see, you see this, detected, and then the data is coming up. Okay, so the function got called, and uh, you can also see, if I do one more time, see, the new request got triggered. So this is what will happen, um, you know, it will, it will be able to send an email, everything will work good, and you will see email like this. So you'll see email like this okay so just a bonus so if you go to the same um, class i also added a http trigger you see this there's another function which is basically http trigger and in this trigger somebody is going to post a model of video request type okay or maybe they are just posting only the uh, id 
like i'm trying to post only the video request id that got updated so what this method will do is it will actually read the id go talk to the database get the uh, particular data for that id and then again it will going to call the same method to send an email so from where this has been sent if you go to our new project uh, the api project so in our uh, main api project i have added a new controller called video request controller we will be watching about this curl operation endpoints in the next video but basically in this video you know whenever there is a update or create that's happening we will be able to call that azure function from here which i will show in the next video how to do it but that's what this all video is about so this video let's recap we are doing sql trigger azure function which means whenever there is an update or a record inserted in a particular table it gets triggered and then azure function will read the data i mean receive the data and then it will process the data it will basically send an email to the user right so that is what we have seen this in this video i hope you enjoy this video if you like this video do subscribe to my channel share this with your friends if you're looking for new exciting videos go to this website and request your own videos so i'll be able to process your request all right guys i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding